One of the best aspects of Hunt Showdown is the opportunities it provides you to outplay your opponents. Whether it's a perfectly executed ambush, a coordinated team flank, or a well-cooked grenade, there's no better feeling than completely outsmarting your enemy. In this video, we'll be doing an in-depth analysis of my favorite way to outplay somebody. Dude. The wall bang. Before we get started, I want to take a moment of your time to say thank you so much for the support in the last video. I received an unprecedented amount of positive feedback on it, especially for a first time upload. And viewers like you really encouraged me to work on projects like this. I loved reading every single comment and engaging with the audience, and I'm glad you see analysis videos like this as valuable to the community. Thanks again. Let's get into the video. Oh, I see him. Yep. Hit him. Hit him. Poison. Okay, down below. Okay. I'm just gonna jump down uh, below then. Another one's pushing up. He's up. Nice, nice. He's dead too? Nice. nice. There's a lot of talk about when it comes to bullet penetration. You probably already know that there are primarily three types of bullet sizes in Hunt Showdown. Compact, medium, and long. And the compact has the least penetration, medium has the second best, and long ammo has the best penetration. What you might not know is how much better medium ammo is over compact or long over medium. And you definitely wouldn't know how much damage is lost as a bullet penetrates objects. Once you throw FMJ into the mix, you've got at least six bullet types to understand. You may have heard that FMJ compact is better at penetrating than long ammo, but how true is that? What about medium ammo FMJ? Is there ever a scenario where FMJ long ammo gives you a penetration advantage? Then throw shotguns, spitzer ammo, the Nitro Express, and high velocity into the mix, and there's suddenly a lot to know about bullet penetration. Buckle up! We'll be covering any question you could possibly have about punching holes through walls in this video, so that you can make the most informed decisions possible with your loadouts. There's a timestamp for each section, in case you need to come back and compare a specific ammo type, and I'll finish off with a list of guns that should and shouldn't be used with FMJ. Let's get into it, starting with compact ammo. Compact ammo, as the smallest and lightest ammo type, has the worst penetration of the three primary ammo types. When using compact, you are limited to penetrating wooden walls. Metal, trees, and brick can never be penetrated by normal compact ammo. While you incur no damage penalty by shooting through one piece of wood, there is a 40% damage decrease through a second piece. After piercing the second piece of wood, the compact bullet loses its penetration capabilities completely. Additionally, you should know that there is a limit to the range at which compacts can penetrate wood. It varies slightly between guns, but sits at around approximately 50 meters. Set that guy down. If you change out your compact ammo for the FMJ variant, you'll see the most drastic increase in wallbang potential of any ammo type. FMJ lets compact pierce through one metal sheet with no damage decrease, and can pierce through two pieces of metal at a 50% damage decrease. FMJ also increases the amount of wood walls that compacts can penetrate, and allows bullets to pass through thin trees. Do note that while FMJ compact and above do gain the ability to penetrate a singular brick, it will only help you clip corners of brick walls, not pass completely through them. Additionally, it retains its penetration through wood walls to at least its effective range, and retains metal piercing capabilities up to approximately 80 meters. FMJ also increases the max damage range of compact weapons, 20 meters to 30 meters for every compact weapon, except for the Winfield Suppressor, which goes from 10 meters to 20 meters instead. Medium ammo, being the neglected middle child that it is, has near identical penetration properties to compact, except that it loses less damage through more than one piece of wood, seeing a 20% damage decrease instead of compact's hefty 60% damage decrease. It also doesn't lose the ability to pierce wood walls at range, unlike compact ammo. With FMJ, medium ammo gains the ability to pierce metal and can pierce four pieces of wood, incurring up to a 35% damage penalty. It also can penetrate thin trees. The range increase for medium FMJ is interesting. While the max damage range of compact and medium are the same at 20 meters, FMJ increases the max damage range of medium ammo rifles to 40 meters, unlike compact's 30 meters. Medium pistols, the Vetterly Silenced, and the Centennial Silenced still go from 20 meters to 30 meters. Standard long ammo has much better penetration values than both standard medium and compact. 
It can penetrate up to four pieces of wood cover and can penetrate one metal sheet. While the penetration is good, it is still completely outclassed by FMJ Compact. One of the most annoying problems with regular long ammo is that it cannot penetrate any wood after striking one sheet of metal. This means that a sheet of metal leaning on a wall or a wooden slat underneath a metal roof can completely eat your bullet. Long ammo also loses the capability to pierce metal past 50 meters. FMJ has an extra layer of wooden penetration and allows the bullet to pass through two pieces of metal and a piece of wood before being stopped. Unfortunately, if you were expecting long ammo FMJ to become an unstoppable laser beam like me, you'd be disappointed. There are very few objects that can be penetrated by FMJ long that can't be penetrated by anything else. You do not get the ability to penetrate bricks or large trees. The one piece of cover that I was able to find where FMJ pierces that no smaller caliber will pierce are the metal stairs that you see in Nichols Prison and Pelican Island Prison. If you have a vendetta against those stairs in particular, FMJ long ammo is for you. There is a sizable range increase for long ammo FMJ. 40 meters to 60 meters for most guns, excluding the spark suppressor and the sparks pistol, which go from 30 to 40 meters and 20 meters to 30 meters, respectively. On the topic of long ammo, let's touch on Spitzer ammo. Spitzer increases your bullet penetration and increases bullet velocity while negatively impacting damage. Spitzer carries its damage through walls even better than FMJ long. As an added bonus, Spitzer can also pierce one enemy hunter and strike the one behind them, an attribute shared only with the Nitro Express. Though it has even higher penetration values, it still cannot penetrate large trees or bricks. Interestingly, it doesn't increase the max damage range, unlike FMJ. Finishing up on bullets, let's talk about the gun with the best penetration in the game, the Nitro Express. The Nitro can pierce through seven pieces of wood before being stopped, and is the only bullet that can penetrate through solid brick and large trees. Oddly enough, though the Nitro has ridiculous penetration, it greatly struggles against metal, having its whopping 364 damage reduced to 72 through one sheet of metal, and down to 36 damage through a sheet of metal plus a wood wall. Now, I had to double and triple check this one, because it didn't seem to make sense, especially when I began to analyze Nitro Shredder Rounds. Shredder here. Rounds are supposed to decrease the penetration of the Nitro, but increase the one-shot range. When it comes to wood, brick, and trees, the penetration numbers make sense. But for whatever reason, Shredder Ammo retains its damage through metal much better than standard Nitro Ammo. To me, this seems to be a balancing error, oh, where the metal penetration values got mixed up between standard ammo and shredder ammo. But feel free to speculate in the comments below the reasoning behind this. Oh, on this mound right here. Uh, the farther back mound. Um, oh. Shotguns, fortunately, are a bit more straightforward. Buckshot can only penetrate one wooden wall, and it can only do this out to a certain range. 10.5 meters for long and medium barrels, and 8 meters for short barrels. In my last video on shotgun slugs, I said that slug penetration is on par with compact ammo. While that was mostly true, there are slight variations worth noting. A single wooden wall will shave off approximately 1 meter of range from your one shot with slugs. Additionally, slugs do not stop penetrating wooden walls past a certain range, unlike compact. You wouldn't do it again, right? Why? Stop! Finishing up, let's briefly touch on miscellaneous bullet penetration facts. High velocity is the only special ammo type that neither increases nor decreases bullet penetration. All of the other special ammo types not mentioned in this video, such as explosive, incendiary, and flechette, Remove penetration on every surface, excluding chicken wire. Do note that penny shot and poison ammo share a unique property that doesn't allow them to ignite explosive barrels. No! Am I pushing you hard? Oh my god! Limb penetration exists on every gun that doesn't shoot pellets or arrows. This means that shooting a hunter in the arm being held in front of their torso counts as okay. a torso shot, not an arm shot. 
Limb penetration is not lost at range, at least out to 150 meters. Shooting through Concertino requires at least standard long ammo, and FMJ and Nitro ammo appear to more easily break the wires. To finish off this section, let's briefly touch on piercing through trees. If your long or FMJ bullet hits a portion of a tree that is as thin as the green section of this image, it will penetrate. If the tree is as thick or thicker than the red section, the only bullet that can penetrate it is the Nitro Express. And that's it. We're done. Here's a nifty little spreadsheet that shows the damage multipliers from penetrating cover with each ammo type. You can pause the video if you'd like to read into the numbers a bit more. And as promised, here's my opinion on the guns that you should and shouldn't use FMJ on. Almost all pistols that can run FMJ should. The muzzle velocity penalty is much lower in comparison to rifles, and the marginal benefits are much higher for compact and medium ammo. Most compact and medium rifles are fine with FMJ, but can also be viable with other ammo types. FMJ should typically be avoided when using long ammo. The marginal benefit is much less than that of medium and compact, and the muzzle velocity penalty is much higher. One notable exception is the Sparks pistol, which appreciates the increased range with a less drastic muzzle velocity penalty. Now I know what you're thinking looking at this list. What's up, Matt? If you're still watching here at the end, pat yourself on the back. You now hold a PhD in penetration. I know this was a lot of data to digest compared to the last video, but I hope you'll find it useful. I sure did. If you are still here, you should consider joining my Discord. As you can imagine, doing all this testing by hand is time consuming. So if you'd like to help collect data and demystify hound shutdown mechanics, swing on by. Link is in the description. This video would not have been possible without these three test dummies. Scully, Beret Dog, and Seeker12789. Thank you so much for letting me shoot you a bunch. If you didn't catch my last video, it was an in-depth analysis on the damage ranges of slugs. Click here to check it out. No spoilers, but my next video will be putting a long-standing debate to rest. Stay tuned. Alright, hopefully the heavy duty rain doesn't start so I can set people on fire. Okay, cool, thanks. <laughs> no way, dude! No way that timing is like, I'm saving that.